All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, another episode of Trip Advisor. I'm here with my friend Keith Giles from Texas, El Paso, who, if you've been following the channel, is a familiar face and a familiar voice. So, Keith, it's uh, good to be with you again today. Welcome. Jason, thank you so much. Um, good to be back. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to live vicarious through you, your work, your weather. It's uh, the middle of winter here in, in Canada. So you said it was a nice, uh, comfortable 58 degrees or 54 degrees yeah, today yeah, in El Paso. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Nice. I got I got to I got to make a visit down your way in February cuz I'm just yeah. hanging on trying to get through the winter here. Oh yeah. Um well, we got a good conversation lined up today. We're going to talk about all things related to choir publishing and uh for those in my Canadian audience maybe some aren't familiar with choir publishing. They might be familiar with your voice, your name, Maybe they've unknowingly read some books published by choir, but um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the new projects that are happening with choir, but maybe in brief, you can kind of give our listeners just a, a little bit of a, a walk down the history of choir publishing, your personal relationship, maybe your on-ramp, how you got connected first with choir, yeah. and now your exciting new role with choir publishing. Yeah, well, thanks so much. And this is a great opportunity to talk a little bit about choir. So yeah, I should say real quick, choir is, it's not, it's pronounced choir, it's spelled Q-U-O-I-R. Right. Um, just to make it, you know, stand out, make it unique. Um, so choir publishing was started, um, I think in Orange, California, about maybe six years ago or so, six or seven years ago, by a guy named Rafael Palindo. Um, and initially he started the company you know, he already had a job. Uh, he's a he's a graphic designer. He's an excellent um, art director and graphic designer, and that's really his strength. And he's worked for companies like Taco Bell and some other marketing agencies. He now works for a, a company um, uh, in around LA that does some some stuff. So that's his full time job. And um, but he initially started Choir because he had a lot of friends who were who were writing books, um, kind of like Christian. Um, books and kind of the deconstruction and emerging or like a house church space. And, um, and they were self-publishing and, you know, he would, he saw that their covers were really bad and their internal design was really, you know, it looked like a self-published book. Uh, you put it that well, way. Yeah. They say, don't judge a book by its cover, but it's hard not to, right? <laughs> it, it, <laughs> is, it is. Yeah. Uh, it does really matter actually. And I, and yeah. I had self-published before I, I, I published self-published like four books before uh, I ended up with choir. So I, I know it's a lot of work and it's really difficult to put out a quality product. So anyway, he, that's how he started. He said, you know, look, I'll, I'll give you a, a great cover design. I'll do the internals for you. Um, I'll get you set up on Kindle and Audible and paperback on Amazon. And and so he did. And he did that for several of his friends and published their books and they look great. And they, uh, you know, just succeeded much more because of the work that he put into it. So that's how he started it really kind of on the side. Um, I came along about a year and a half to two years after he had started doing that. Um, like I said, I had self-published like four books before, and I was in the process of um, you know, writing. And I had, you know, I had been blogging the what became Jesus Untangled, uh, which was my first book. And so it was, uh, you know, I, I was letting people know on my blog and my posts and social media that I was getting ready to publish this book called Jesus Untangled. Um, about crucifying our politics, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Lamb and all that. And my plan was to self-publish that. So Ralph took me to lunch and tried to convince me to publish with him. And I I honestly went into that lunch meeting thinking the answer was no, I wasn't interested. I had all my reasons why. And uh, by the end of that lunch, I realized I'd be silly not to go with him, to at least try it. I thought, I'll just, you know, whatever, I'll do one book with him and see how it goes. Sure. And I did the first book with him and... Uh, the, the experience was so amazing. I just thought I, I should have done this a long time ago. Um, it was just wonderful. And, and Ralph not only designed a great book, you know, helped me put out a really quality product and all that. Um, over the years, you know, I ended up publishing seven books in that series with Ralph. And um, Ralph was not just my publisher. He was a friend and he was also a collaborator, you know, like, like when I look back over that seven part Jesus unseries, for example, there's at least two of those books that I only, I really only published them, wrote them and published them because Ralph insisted. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was the book on hell, Jesus undefeated. Um, he, he, he was after me for a year uh, to like, Keith, you got to write a book on, on universal reconciliation and 
talk about eternal torment. And, and at first I said, no, I don't think so. Um, but he just kept after me until I finally said, well, all right, if I was going to write that book, what would it look like? I wrote an outline. And once I wrote the outline, I was like, oh yeah, I could write this. And it ends up being probably my best-selling book in the series, right? Um, because it's such an important topic. And then the, the final persistence, book, the persistence of Ralph is a microcosm <laughs> of the persistent love of God, right? There it is. Yeah. <laughs> we thank well, you, Ralph. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, and he was also really helpful. Like he was always bouncing ideas, you know, and helping me think through ideas and things. And so I really appreciated him. He was just really a, a, a partner. And I I really appreciated, I mean, it was really a wonderful feeling to, to know that I was an author who had a publisher. I mean, most people don't. I mean, most 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 even authors who get published, let's say they get published with InterVarsity or Whippenstock or something like that. That's usually a one book deal. You know what I mean? Right. I wrote that book and they published that book and then they may or may not publish me ever again, you know. But with choir, it was like an automatic, we're your publisher and anything you write, we want to publish it, right? We're, we are your publisher. So that was just a really, it's a feeling of safety and security and a partnership. Like they're with me. For the it sounds like a family. I get the impression from the outside looking at it, it's like a family, right? They take yes. care of their own and there's actual authentic relationships. Uh, yes. It's more than a business deal. Yeah, yeah. And that's the other thing that was really beautiful about choir that I discovered and that's been growing over the years. So I've been with choir now for like five years as my publisher. Um, yeah, we created something called the Quorum, um, which is a private Facebook group. That's it's all, you know, all the choir published authors are part of that group. And it's kind of like I said, it's a family. It's also like a little mastermind group. Like we all help each yeah. other, yeah. Um, figure out, you know, ideas and work things out. Hey, should I do this? Should I do that? Or how do I, you know, whatever, you know, people have different questions about different things. How do I get on radio shows? How do I, um, how do I get my book in, into contests or whatever, you know, things like that. So nice. we all help each other. Um, and that's been really astounding. Like, again, most, most publishers are on their own. And they don't have that kind of network of support and choir, you know, has created that. And that's been a wonderful thing. Um, so we all help each other promote our books. You know, anytime a choir author has a new book, it's like, hey, we're all out there pushing it and promoting it and sharing it and talking about it. And uh, right. so that's been really great. Cool. So you go from this lunch and you're really yeah. skeptical Yeah. to, OK, maybe one time to I'm a part of the family. Yeah. Fast forward to most recently. And now where yeah. what's your relationship with choir now i mean you and your co-conspirer uh matt De De stefano i yeah. mean you made a big decision last was a few months ago how where, yeah. where are we now and yeah yeah so I, I, to go back a little bit yeah we um matt and i are probably the two kind of um i think we have the most stake in choir i think we've been with choir the longest we publish the most right. books with choir um and we and because of that we probably were the the biggest complainers anytime we did something was going on with choir you know again ralph was doing this on the side he has a wife he has two kids um he has a, a full-time job yeah. and at the same time you know he's got these authors like us going hey I, where's my cover hey where's my audiobook hey when are you going to do this you know we're like demanding all these things of him and you know he's only one guy and he had a limited bandwidth and so i think because we were the biggest complainers he kind of came to us um uh, around the summer of last year, 2022. And he, uh, he just asked Matt and I, he said, Hey, um, I feel like I'm holding choir back. And, um, and, you know, it, I feel like it's, it's grown to a certain point that I can't take it any further. Would you and Matt like to, you know, I, I'll give you the company if you want to take it forward. So we were both blown away. Um, it was a real shock to hear that. I mean, he told us he wanted to meet with us and you know, we scheduled a Zoom call. Matt and I were kind of talking like, what do you think it is? You know, we we were speculating all these things. Not None of us guessed that it was this. None of us ever thought hmm. that we would that he would offer us to run the company. But he did. And we both decided, OK, we'll do it. So um, we had about a six to seven month runway where we kind of shadowed him. We had meeting weekly meetings. We asked him tons of questions. He showed us all the ins and outs of how choir works. Yeah. Um, we started brainstorming ideas of what choir 2.0 might look like. And we put up, got everything in motion. And as of January of, of this year, 2023, um, Matt and I are now the co-owners of choir publishing. 
That's that's wonderful. Just hearing the story from that initial lunch, <laughs> full of skepticism, to now you're the co-owner of Choir. And yeah, good on Ralph yeah. for tapping you on the shoulder and persisting. Good on him for knowing when to say when, right? To know yeah. that humility and courage to say, you know what, I'm holding this back and just offering yeah. it to you both. So that's yeah. fantastic. And I got to say, I have to say too, um, Ralph, it was an emotional call. It really was. Um, I mean, he was getting emotional because, and I, re- and I realized as he was, as he was, you know, telling us what was going on with choir and what was going on in his own life and um, recognizing the need to kind of like hand this thing over. Um, it, you know, it's like, it's like giving away your kid, you know, it's like, it's like handing off your baby. And so it was, uh, and I think Matt and I definitely understood that. Like, yeah, this is a big deal for him to make this decision. It's not easy decision. Um, it was brave. It was courageous. And, and so we, and we all both felt very honored that he would trust us basically with his baby. Like, Mm -hmm. Hey, I I birthed this thing. I, I brought it, I've raised it to this point, but I need, I need someone to take it to the next level. And so, yeah, that was a big deal for both of us. And um, and we we've taken that very seriously. And I want to say too, Ralph has been, he's kind of still a silent partner. Um, yeah. so thankfully, you know, he's still we still meet with him, you know, maybe once every other week. Um, we have questions, we're always asking him ideas or questions about things. He's still designing covers for us. So, you know, the last all all the books we put out um are still Ralph doing the covers and he's still doing an amazing job. So we're very grateful that he's, you know, he's not completely hands off, um, but we're still running the day to day for the company. Sure. So you mentioned you're transitioning into the season of Choir 2.0, as you put it. So let's talk a little bit about what Choir 2.0, obviously there's going to be some continuity, some discontinuity, some, some things to prune, some things to grow, (laughs) some new, new ventures popping up. One new venture in particular we want to talk about is this Choir Classic series. Yes. I've been seeing all over social media. So let's, let's dive into that. That's exciting. That's just launching this week, I believe officially. So tell us about choir classics, what it is. I'd love to hear the backstory on why choir classics. Yes. And um, I can tell you the whole story. Yes. (laughs) Tell me the whole story. Let's do it. Did it start with a lunch meeting you were skeptical about? (laughs) (laughs) No. um, Well, here, you know, here's, what's funny. Like, again, I, I have to even stop and remind myself that Matt and I have really only been running this company at, as of you as of this conversation, a little over thirty days. I mean, it's a crazy to me. Like, and some of these, like the Choir Classics, is one example where we just had an idea, we brainstormed it, we talked about it, and we launched it. And and we're basically we and we just published this week three books um, in this Choir Classic series in less than thirty days. Like, that's Incredible. amazing to me. That's unheard <laughs> um, and of. It's, and they're doing great. I mean, it was like, this was a great idea and, and we get to see immediately the, the fruit of it. So I'll, I'll back it up. The way it started, um, so there's another author. Uh, he's a friend of ours. His name is Jeff Turner. Um, yeah. And I think what the way it started was Jeff had this idea. Um, I guess he discovered there's there's a lot of excellent, really great books in what's called the public domain, meaning they've the copyright has expired there, it's yes. a great book, but it's kind of like sitting out there and no one owns the copyright. And um, so there's an excellent book that I used as a reference. It was published in the 1800s um, by a guy named um, Hansen, J.W. Hansen. And it's uh, it's about patristic universalism. It's about the history of universal reconciliation in the early Christian church. The title is something like 400 years. Um, I think it's called Universalism, um, the Doctrine of the Church for 400 Years or something like that. And uh, anyway, it's it's in the public domain. And so Jeff loves that book, too. And he he decided to publish his own version of it. He made a new a new version of it, a new cover. And he on his own, he launched it on Amazon. And we I was seeing him sharing the link. And I was like, what? <laughs> that thing's that first of all, that book's in the public domain. And second of all, like he just published that on his own. Like, whoa, we got to talk to this guy. So Matt and I got a meeting with Jeff. Um, he kind of let us know like, oh yeah, I mean, there's, there's all these amazing books. He started sharing some of the titles that are in the public domain and we started getting really excited. And so we said, well, Jeff, why don't we partner with you? Um, if you will help us, um, kind of get those books ready for, for publication, um, you know, put them together, do the margins, like all the, Mm -hmm. all the internal, you know, setup and design for these titles. Um, we'll, 
our, here's here's how we came in. Our vision was, well, what if we could, you know, re-release these kind of amazing books that are out there, and the, the list is incredible. And I'll, I'll tell you what we have planned coming up. Uh, it, it's very exciting. Um, so we started like picking out the titles, like, okay, yeah, we'd like to do this book and this book and this book. Okay, but then and this is where we came in. Like my idea was, what if we put brand new covers on these books, like amazing covers, and what if we had we asked people well, more well-known within sort of the Christian deconstruction space. Um, what if we asked them to write the forewords to these books? And I think it kind of like, um, you know, cause they have their own followers. They have people that read their books and like you know, what they're into. And um, if, if they could write a forward to the, to these books and we re-release them, we really felt like we could breathe new life into some of these titles. And um, so that was the, that was the vision for it. And uh, then we started like reaching out. And so I started sending emails to different people. Um, so we just launched, I'll say, we just launched this week, um, the first three, we launched the three titles, um, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, both of those in one book by Lewis nice. Carroll with a forward by David Bentley Hart, which is a phenomenal, oh my gosh, it's it's a phenomenal well, that's essay. a heavy hitter right there. Yeah, yeah. he's he yeah. was the big one. I think honestly, if he had said, if he hadn't answered me, if he hadn't said yeah, he would do it, I don't know if we would have done this. But once he said yes, it was like, okay, we're on. Um, we also released uh one of my personal favorite books, Leo Tolstoy's The Kingdom of God is Within You. Oh my and gosh, that you're, book. You're right. You wrote mind. the forward for that one, right? I I wrote the forward for that, and right. that's a dream come true for me that there's a you know that there that, that there's an edition of that book out there with my name on the cover and a, and a forward on the inside next to Tolstoy. That's a it, huge honor. It may or may um, not be in my shopping cart right now online. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> well, it hit number one. I mean, it, it, we released it on Tuesday and it hit number one uh, in two, in two categories. It's number three in a couple other categories. So like I was Fantastic. Away. to be able, here's the thing too. It's amazing to be able to say that choir helped Leo Tolstoy hit number one on Amazon after all these years with that book. That's, that's huge to bring that book back to number one. Um, that's awesome. Uh, and so then the other one is a pretty obscure, but this was Matt's choice. Um, Matt's a huge Tolkien fan. And um, one of the books in the public domain is a collection of poetry by a guy named uh, Jeffrey Bosch uh, Smith. And he was a friend of Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, um, he wrote some poems, many of them he wrote from the battlefield in World War I, and he ended up dying. And so Tolkien personally um, helped collate these poems and, and publish the original edition. Of, uh, it's called A Spring Harvest. And he wrote the preface to it as well, uh, because this was his friend. And so uh, when Matt found out this was in the public domain, he was like, oh, my gosh, I, I want to put this back out there again. And, Which is um, great. We need those, right? We yeah, need some of those yeah. that have fallen into obscurity. That oh still... yeah, no, yeah. This is this is totally an obscure book that people have never heard of before. Right. Um, but it but it's really beautiful, very powerful book. So those are the first three we're launching with, nice. and um, they're doing great, and we're really happy and very proud. And we've got some amazing things, you know, sitting in the wings as well, um, coming up in the next couple of months. So, so. If I can ask, I guess this this initial three was always the plan, and then yeah, it'll kind of to use a Canadian analogy that Texans won't be familiar with snowball from there. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So the uh, the goal was to launch with three titles, just to kind of give it a big push um, in the launch. Yeah, and then um, we'll, our plan is to release at least one a month um, nice. going forward if we can keep the pace. Uh, but so sure. far, we have. I'll let you know what's in the pipeline. Um, sure. I, if you could, that'd be great. Yeah. I can't let you know all of them because we don't have signed contracts yet. And you know, no, no, of course. I don't want to announce it and be like, Hey, whatever happened to that? But these are the ones I can, I can safely say um, are coming soon. Uh, and I'm really excited about these. So, um, so we're doing the brothers Karamazov uh, by Dostoevsky. One of my favorites of all time. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's such a good book um, with a forward by Brian Zahn. That makes sense. And, yeah, yeah, it doesn't it. And see, here's here's why this whole choir yep. classic thing makes sense, is because um, I think this is again going back to when we had the initial idea for it, um, because I know that Brian Zahn loves Brothers Karamazov. I know that. Yep. I know that's his favorite book. And mm -hmm. I knew if I went to him and said, Brian, wouldn't it be cool if there was an edition, a brand new edition with a brand new cover of that of your favorite book that had a forward by you? Like, of course you would say yes. I'm in. So of yeah. course he said yes, and I'm like, oh, awesome. 
uh, that was another one I really wanted to get uh, to get Brian in on this too. And so when he said yes, and David Bentley Hart said yes again, David Bentley Hart I knew because I had interviewed him a long time ago. Right. He told me what a huge fan he was of Alice in Wonderland. And he said actually he reads it every year, at least once really? a year he reads through it again. That's interesting. And he's done this since he was a kid, so he he really really loves that book. So that was really nice to be able to connect. It was like getting the right person to write the forward someone that really believed in this work and really had a passion for it and could communicate some new perspectives on these, um, on these classics. So, so Brother Skaran Matsov is, is one of the ones coming up. Um, there's another book again, and I, some of these books, I can't believe they're in the public domain. Um, but, uh, there's a book called the prophet by Khalil Gibran. And, oh my gosh, if you haven't read that book, such a powerful, beautiful, spiritual book it's um Khalil Gibran is a is a mystic and um that the prophet is uh, I, I'm reading through it right now Wendy and I are reading through it right now and um like before we go to bed at night reading a couple of chapters it's just a beautiful book of spiritual wisdom and truth it's really beautiful it's and, been on um, my long it's been on my long list of to read for too long so oh, you'll love I'll, it I'll pull the trigger on it now yeah I'm telling you once you start reading it you won't want to stop it it's it's nice. powerful and, and I, I, start, I started off reading it myself, just, you know, on my own. But then I kept going to Wendy and going, oh, my gosh, listen to this. I have to read it or something, you know. I was like, well, let's just read it together <laughs> because I basically am reading it to you. Uh, it's sure. so good. Um, but so anyway, that one we're going to reprint um, with – it has drawings by Khalil Gibran. He actually did his own drawings and sketches in the original version he did. So we're actually going to reprint the drawings as well. And, um, and that one, the forward, is by William Paul Young, who wrote The Shack. Canadian. So, yeah. Now he, he begged me for that one. He was like, dude, I got to do that. I want to nice. do that one. Um, so yeah, that one's good. And then, um, and then the other one is the call of the wild by Jack London. Oh, nice. And um, Shonda Ja is writing the forward to that Shonda. If you don't know who Shonda is, Shonda Ja, she's become one of the co-hosts of the heretic happy hour podcast that, right. um, that Matt and I do with Katie Valentine and uh december rose mm -hmm. and uh shonda's she also begged me for that one she loves jack london love kind of love hates jack london so her forward is very interesting um but anyway that'll be those are the three the next three that'll be coming out again we have others in, down the pipeline but i don't want to announce them yet because we're uh we're waiting to see who who jumps in but it, it's it's given us such um an excitement you know we have this reimagination of wow what kind of books can we bring back into public domain and um or we bring back into public awareness um that are in the public domain i mean i'll let you know we are thinking about so i you know, i can't announce the forwards yet but i can say that we are we're looking um to republish like some of the works of frederick Douglass, um mm. which again he's such a powerful and amazing um thinker uh and christian but yes. who approaches things from a very unique perspective and i think something that is is lacking today um so we're looking we're looking to republish some of his writings um and i'll just go in and tease this because this is probably going to happen eventually probably not till next year um but it's no secret that my favorite science fiction writer of all time is philip k dick and there are about 15 of his short stories that are in the public domain well you're a blade runner fan like me uh, yeah. so yeah. uh-huh that's exactly right <laughs> And so uh, when I found that out, I was like, what? Oh, my gosh. So, like, I'm going to have to write the forward to that one, too. I think just selfishly, um, it would be so cool to uh, to re-release some of his short fiction and uh, and write the forward to that. So that'll be something coming up soon, too. Fantastic. That's exciting. So, I, you know, the idea to re-release these classics is great on its own, but then the brilliance is to find the right contemporary authors and theologians who have passion for those classics to yeah. tag on their own forwards. I think it's, it's a brilliant idea. So kudos to you and, and yeah. Matt and anybody else in your think tank. Uh, wonderful. Yeah. And Jeff, Jeff Turner, I got to give him props. Jeff. Like, yeah. He's really the guy uh, that got shout it out to with. Jeff. I, I read Jeff's book. I think it's called saints in the arms of a happy God. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I read that about 10 years ago when it came out and that really, help kickstart my deconstruction. So kudos oh, yeah. to Jeff and, and shout out to him and his work. So, yeah. Yeah. And I got to say too, here's the other thing, you know, as we were putting this together, you know, at the same time we were behind the scenes, you know, coming up with the idea and, and, and assembling everything, putting together the covers and all that stuff and getting it ready uh, to launch, you know, at the same time here in, in the States, 
you have a lot of Christians um, trying to ban books, pull books out of libraries. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and so Mm -hmm. we definitely also felt like there's almost like a synergy, like, yeah, this is the right time to do this. Like culturally, we feel like it's more important for us to be championing these kind of things rather than trying to pull them out of print and get them out of people's hands. Like, no, people need to think people need to read. Um, And so, yeah, we we're happy to kind of be going in the other direction. No, it's good. It's kind of a little act of resistance as well and rebellion. Yeah. Good stuff. So, I mean, yeah, just, just one more thing on your plate, Keith. That's all right. (laughs) Why not? uh, What's one more thing? Right. Now, just because you're co-publishing, you're still writing. Um, So maybe before we wind down our conversation, what what are you up to maybe maybe i'm gonna get matt try and get matt back talk about his new work but maybe you can speak on his behalf because he's got a new book coming out i know yeah and i know you got something uh something in the works as well so as much as you're able to maybe you can kind of tell us what you're up to and maybe what's uh what's coming out for matt yeah well i'll start with matt i'm sorry matt couldn't be here for this conversation um but i will say um, many people, if you follow him at all, you know, he is a huge Tolkien fan. He, and so he has a book coming out called the wisdom of hobbits. And, um, I mean, it's, I don't think it's even out yet. It's already hit number one, um, in its category. Uh, the Tolkien society has, uh, started to review it. And of course they've approved it. You kind of need their blessing for, for anything huge. you do with Tolkien. Yeah. What an honor. Um, I, I think it's genius. Honestly, I think it's one of these things where this may be the biggest book that matt publishes and i think and have the widest appeal um because it's not a deconstruction book you know what i mean it's not and it's not like the typical thing you know matt's wheelhouse is sort of like poking the bear and making people you know pissing people off and all that you know like heretic and all these kind of books which are he's great at and i love that i love that he has that kind of snarky sarcastic kind of you know angle and edge but this is not that book right no not at all no i mean i think people who have no idea who he is, or even if you do know who he is, you're going to find this to be a very surprising book. Um, um, really good. Just as it's, it's just a good book. You know what I mean? It's not even um, necessarily something where he's not quoting scripture. He's not arguing deconstruction. He's really just using this uh, Tolkien's hobbits as like a, a, a template for a way to think about living our life and in, in, in a, with spiritual integrity and maturity sure. and, I, I got to say our hope, here's our fingers crossed. Um, we feel like that this book really could explode out even beyond kind of the Christian deconstruction kind of market. Well, that, I was going to make that comment. This should appeal widely regardless of oh, yeah. religion, creed, et cetera. Right. Yes, Just absolutely. And and this universal book, I, stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. So here's our hope. Um, you know, Stephen Colbert has made also no bones about the fact that he is a huge, uh, Lord of the Rings, Tolkien, and Hobbit fan, and he will be getting a copy in the mail. And um, I'm 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 seriously believing that one of these days I'm going to see Matt DiStefano on the on the Late Show with Stephen Colbert talking about his Hobbit book. Um, I'm I'm hoping that's going to happen. <laughs> well, if that happens, I hope you're in the audience there cheering. I'm going to be there. I got to be there. I got to <laughs> yeah. get there somehow. <laughs> nice, nice. That'd be amazing. Yeah, fantastic. So, so when does that release? It's available for pre-order now. When's it release? Um, I think it is comes it May? out. This well, let me double check. Um, you think I would know that, right? But if Sorry, Matt was here, he would spot know. Here, yeah. Um, I'll try and get Matt see. back, talk more about it with him. But yeah, um, it's releasing March fourteenth. March okay, so not less than a month away. Great, yeah, coming up very soon. Yep, yeah. and um, oh yeah, it's it's already gotten great endorsements uh, from amazing people. Yeah, I really believe that book is going to be huge. And again, and that's also part of like, you know, when we talk about this book having a potential to have an appeal outside of kind of the Christian deconstruction world, um, I think we're we're hoping the same thing for our classic series as well. I mean, so again, that's part of our vision with choir. We kind of want to move away, not move away because we're not we're not leaving. You know, we're going to we're going to continue to publish books about um deconstruction and reconstruction and all that of course i mean that's still our bread and butter though we, sure. we have amazing new authors maria francesca french heather hamilton you know we've been putting out some great books dan henderson eric english um we have many more things in the works roger woolsey his next book is coming out through choir um so you know we're we still believe in that and we definitely still want to be a publisher that that champions those people and that i th- those those topics choir always wants to be seen as Anybody going through deconstruction or reconstruction 
turn to choir. Like if choir puts it out, it's for you. You know what I mean? That's that's kind of where we want to be. Um, but at the same time, we our vision is to take choir beyond those because uh, sure. at the end of the day, we're just a publishing company and we can we can publish lots of things. So that's fiction. Um, that's poetry. You know, we just did Daryl Epps poetry book, which mm. has done phenomenal. Um, and so, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to expand that a little bit too and kind of grow choir outside of the kind of the niche little deconstruction world and out and out beyond that. So that's one of our hopes. Cool. Um, so, all right, let me take an educated guess here. Let's turn to what you're up to. So you did these seven <laughs> books, Jesus Un. Yep. Last time we had a conversation about Sola Mysterium, your yep. latest book, which, oh, chef's kiss. Love that Thank book. You. I've you. shared it widely. Um, are there any more Solas coming? Is that is going to yeah, be a new series well, now, a Sola series? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 at this point, yes, um, I am. I am in the process, even at, as we speak, of um, putting what I hope are the final edits and, and draft together for the next Sola book. Um, I'm thinking it might be a trilogy, but probably no more than a trilogy. I'm I'm not thinking beyond that. Um, but the second book, this would be the second book in the trilogy. Um, I guess I can tell you the title. I, I've been I've been kind of keeping it a secret a little bit, but I, I guess I can tell you. I'll tell you, Jason. <laughs> um, the title is Sola Deus. Um, so Sola okay. Mysterium was the first one, um, yep. only mystery. Sola Deus, only God. Um, and Sola Mysterium, you know, I I talked about, you know, how God is this being beyond comprehension and all that. So Sola Deus is not really trying to go back and say, okay, let me tell you all about God. But it's still like the way we think about God influences so many things, right? Absolutely. And um, so I just felt like there were things unsaid that I needed to continue that I didn't get to get into in Sola Mysterium. Uh, that'll be in this next book, Sola Deus. And, um, and I even... I mean, just even like a couple of weeks ago, I had an epiphany as I was going through the book, through the second draft, the first, sorry, the first draft. And um, I had this epiphany of like, oh my gosh, this is it. It's like the missing piece fell into place. And I was like, that is it. So now I'm like super excited to finish this up and publish this book and get it out there. Um, I'll have to talk, of course, to my publisher and see when it might can release. Because I wanted, of course, as soon as possible. But I also realized we have other uh, other authors in the queue so I don't want to leapfrog yeah. over them either, but I'm hoping it's going to come out. Um, if if I have my way, uh, this book would be out sometime probably before the fall, uh, you know, end of summer, beginning of fall. Okay. Fantastic. Well, yeah. hey, I'm honored that you're able to share a little bit of that with me today <laughs> and our listeners. So thanks, Keith. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, okay, choir. So for those following, those that want more information about choir, how can they either reach out to you or connect with choir websites or any social media handles you want to share? Yeah, 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 absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. So um, we are in the process of uh, creating a brand new website for choir. The The nice. old one is still up, but it hasn't been updated in a while, uh, but it still works. So if you want to go and see what we're about, and if you, if you're an author, I would say um, if you, if you're an author and you would like to submit a proposal for your book, you can still do that at choir.com. It's Q U O I R.com. Um, so that's one way to get, to kind of find out more about choir. Um, we all, we're all on social media. I mean, we, we have, um, Glenn Siepert is a good friend and he's been our social media guru. Uh, so he runs all of our choir marketing, social media marketing channels for, so choir has presence on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, Twitter and Facebook. We're also building a YouTube channel right now. So you can find choir in all those places. Nice. And of course, Matt DiStefano and myself are available. You know, if you want to follow us You're on all over the place. Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, we're happy to correspond with anybody that way too. Awesome. Keith, thanks. It's always great to hang out with you. And so hopefully those listening, go check out choir, go check out the choir classics. There's three titles available now. And a few more lined up down the road. So I'm excited to see what's upcoming and uh, excited to get my hand on that next uh, solo book as well, Keith. So yeah, thanks for your voice. Thanks for your vision. I uh, appreciate your friendship and uh, take care. We'll be in touch again soon. Thank you so much, Jason. God bless. Thanks.